former UN Representative Jerry Path, his significant other Karen and their two girls, Rachel and Constance, wake and partake in a family breakfast. Jerry tells Constance, the most youthful girl, that he quit his place of employment to invest more energy with the family. On the television is a few information about hardship and discuss military regulation. Afterward, they sit in weighty Philadelphia traffic when the city is gone after by a crowd of zombies these assailants move rapidly, knowing individuals and the nibbled being turned quickly. The paths are in a fender bender during the frenzy rush and Jerry sees it requires roughly 12 seconds for a chomped individual to change. As the confusion spreads, the paths escape from the city in a taken RV. They stop close to Newark, New Jersey at a huge food store where Karen load up on anything that food she can search and Jerry can find prescription when his oldest little girl, Rachel, who is experiencing a rough asthma assault because of the shock and stress of what has been going on with them. His better half has gone after by thieves Jerry shoots one of them and Karen has given up. Briefly, it looks like a cop could capture Jerry in spite of his holding the rifle over his head yet the official is essentially searching for provisions himself. Outside the store, the family takes asylum in a high-rise in Newark. Representative Secretary General Thierry, Yumi Tony a close buddy of Jerry's, calls and lets the family know that he is sending a helicopter to protect them, but it will take until the following morning to show up. The paths can see loud in a little loft with a Latino family. One of the youngsters, a kid named Thomas, communicates in English and deciphers for the paths. Jerry, accepting that the most obvious opportunity with regards to endurance is to continue to move, can't persuade Thomas' family to leave with them. The following morning, the paths creep through the generally deserted apartment attempting to find the rooftop, however the undead distinguish them and they are pursued to the rooftop. They track down Thomas on the way. At the point when Jerry is gone after by a few zombies, they heave blood on him. Showing up on the rooftop, Jerry moves toward the edge, prepared to hurl himself off on the off chance that the blood spilled all over makes him turn. He doesn't and, subsequent to holding off one more swarm of the undead, the family sheets the chopper and departures. The helicopter takes the paths to a U.S. Naval Force plane carrying warship off the shoreline of New York City with an entire gathering of different displaced people. Ready, there is group of researchers and military faculty are examining the extent of the overall flare-up. The area is hanging tight there for themselves and sets them up with bunks. A virologist, Dr. Andrew Fassbach, contends that the plague is an infection, whose beginning should be viewed for an immunization as evolved. In light of his mastery as a previous UN examiner, Jerry is entrusted with assisting Fassbach with tracking down the episode's source. Jerry hesitantly consents to help, on given the word that his family will be protected, and is shipped off Camp Humphreys, an army installation in South Korea where an email was gotten around 11 days earlier that expressed that the episode might have begun there. Minutes in the wake of showing up at the base, Jerry's group is gone after by zombies. The scared and fearful Fassbach is killed after incidentally shooting himself in the wake of slipping on the slope of the C-130 plane. The discharge alarms the zombies wandering the region, constraining Jerry and the team to run. Subsequent to being protected by the base's enduring faculty, Jerry discovers that the zombies are drawn to commotion. The fighters on the base, lead by Skipper Speak, makes sense of that a Korean warrior had been out in the field doing Explorer when he was gone after and turned. His transformation took significantly additional time than what had been seen all the more as of late. The carcass of the tainted man went after the base specialist and both were burned. Speak lets Jerry know how one of his men had the option to remain in the contaminated individuals and not be gone after. Jerry converses with an ex-CIA specialist, Hofner who'd been captured for offering arms to North Korea. He tells Jerry a chilling record of how the North Korea government, had the option to contain the episode in their nation by pulling the teeth of each and every resident inside a 24-hour time frame, giving its residents no real way to taint each other through chomps. Hofner advises Jerry to go to Jerusalem, where the Israeli Mossad had laid out a protected zone not long before the episode was formally recognized, inferring Israel could have had earlier information on what was to come. To get the C-130 refueled and Jerry on board, Speaks men ride in an armada of bikes to try not to make any commotion. Jerry's satellite telephone goes on when Karen attempts to call him and the undead assault. The plane is refueled effectively and Jerry and the C-130 pilot figure out how to get away. In Jerusalem, Jerry meets Mossad pioneer Jurgen Warmbrunn, who makes sense of that the Mossad had months sooner caught correspondences from a military general in India, who expressed that Indian soldiers were battling the Rakshasa, or dead spirits. Warren Brown likewise makes sense of how the focal point of Jerusalem was separated the wall is impressive, somewhere around 50 feet high and exiles are being gotten to the quarantine zone, including non-Jews and Muslims. While Jerry converses with Jurgen, a gathering of Muslim outcasts start to sing happily at tracking down a protected zone to get by in. One of the ladies can find a receiver and the singing becomes stronger. Drawn to the singing, 
the zombies outside start to climb the defensive wall framing a gigantic keep that in the end prevails with regards to entering the city. While escaping, Jerry sees that an elderly person and a skinny kid are overlooked by the zombies. A youthful Israeli lady officer, Sagan, Jerry's escort, is nibbled by a zombie. Jerry rapidly severs her hand to stop the spread of the disease, building up to 12 seconds until he's certain that she won't turn. Jerry and Sagan at last come to the air terminal and figure out how to board a Belarus aviation routes carrier after Jerry's pilot frenzies and takes off. Reaching Diary, Jerry requests the closest WHO or CDC type lab. They are redirected to a WHO research office in Cardiff, Ridges. While in the air, a stowaway zombie is set free from the freight hold and goes after an airline steward. She goes after the other travelers. The plane accidents close to Cardiff after Jerry explodes a projectile to dispense with the zombies. Sagan and Jerry continue as the main obvious overcomers of the accident. Jerry has been speared by a lump of metal. Sagan finds him and they stroll to Cardiff and track down the WHO office. Beyond anyone's reach, the U.S. Naval Force accepts he is dead and ousts his family to Nova Scotia. Subsequent to showing up at the office, Jerry drops at the door and rises and shines three days after the fact lash to a card his injury has been dealt with and guzzed. He can persuade the staff of the office that he's there on a particular mission. The men watching him call his significant other's satellite telephone. Jerry picks up the telephone and lets Jerry know that his family were thought of superfluous workforce and were moved to a land-based office. Jerry is disturbed yet Jerry can confirm Jerry's personality to the dubious WHO staff. Jerry uncovers a hypothesis to the watchful researchers that since the elderly person and the debilitated kid in Jerusalem were overlooked, as well as a destitute wino Jerry momentarily saw in Newark that the zombies skirted, and the story the trooper with a limp told about the zombies disregarding him, the tainted don't chomp individuals who are truly harmed or currently in critical condition, since they would be unacceptable as hosts for viral multiplication. He volunteers to infuse himself with a terminal however reparable microbe to check whether his thought works. In any case, the wing of the structure in which the microbes are put away was overwhelmed by zombies after a specialist unintentionally contaminated himself. Jerry chooses to recover a microbe in any case, while Sagan and one of the WHO specialists follow him for reinforcement. They battle their direction through the zombies, and Jerry at last gets to the microbe vault. Inside, Jerry fills a little box with vials of microbes from two separate cupboards. The researchers watch him on camera commenting that the left bureau contains dangerous and serious illnesses. Jerry prepares to leave and sees one of the undead specialists outside. Cornered and without a reasonable weapon, he chooses to infuse himself to check whether his hypothesis will work. He shows the researchers a note saying tell my family I love them, and picks a vial and arbitrary from the case. Jerry holds up a brief time frame and makes the way for the vault. The previous specialist disregards him and Jerry can leave, past the swarm of zombies that have plagued the office. After he successfully returns to the protected piece of the office, everybody celebrates at his hypothesis prosperity, and the specialists fix him of the microorganism. Jerry gets back to his family, in a protected zone in Freeport, Nova Scotia. A immunization got from lethal microorganisms is fostered that can go about as disguise for the soldiers fighting the tainted. Airdrops are performed, conveying the microorganism to all regions of the planet. Human offensives start against the zombies, and trust is re-established. Russia is especially effective in stopping the pandemic with military and regular citizen force. Jerry remarks, this isn't the end. Not even close. Subscribe for more videos like this turn on notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching see you in the next one.